Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very quick but very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. So if you uh, have been following this channel for any length of time, you know what I'm standing by or what I'm kneeling by, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the giant crimson tomato. Really excited because we actually have two, tomato, two tomatoes ripening up. One is ready to be harvested, so I wanted to bring you all along for it and also give you an update on the plant and the other plants and how they're doing because that's something that has been really, really requested is, hey, Luke, we want to see an update. So uh, as you know, we're slam packed, we got a lot going on, so I don't always have time to update you, but things are still happening with the giant crimson tomato. And I will say, I, as I predicted, the size is very, very consistent. I love that. Sometimes you don't know if there's a large tomato or a small tomato, and um, sometimes it can be a really, really small tomato because the plant might be stressed, and it's just trying to ripen up a tomato really quickly. But what I'm pleased to report is that all of the tomatoes we've harvested have been of a consistent size. So I'm pretty safe to say that this is around the size that you can expect from the giant crimson tomato, around six to eight ounces, which was actually the weight of the first tomato we harvested. The first tomato was obviously the largest because it was the first tomato to come out, but all the other tomatoes on here are right around the same size, same color, same everything, and it's a very, very beautiful tomato. I'm really stoked about this. I'm just absolutely over the moon that this tomato plant has produced such consistency uh, throughout the growing season. It's got incredible flavor. It's got just uh, an awesome, uh, I mean, just blemish free, absolutely blemish free. And that's one of the things that I do love about this is that even though it's an heirloom, definitely an heirloom at this point, it's not what you kind of consider like an ugly heirloom. A lot of heirlooms like Cherokee purples and things like that, they have a lot of cat facing and, and things like that. We had cat facing, but not because of the genetics, but because of the growing conditions it was in. It was hot, it was dry, it was, you know, oh, it was just going through so much craziness. But once we got that dialed in, it's doing great and it's producing consistent results of really, really pretty tomatoes. So I'm gonna pan you over so you can check out the other ones here and then, uh, and then, uh, I'll give you uh, kind of an update on how many seeds we've gotten, things like that, because everyone's asking you, when are seeds gonna be available? I'll have a little bit more of an idea um, in a little while, but I'll give you an update on where we're at, at least with seeds. So here we are with the other tomatoes here, and you'll see loads and loads of fruit. I mean, this is just doing awesome here. It's setting a ton of fruit, even got some tomatoes forming in the back here. These are off of the suckers that I took off of the mother plant. And so these are doing great. They're just doing so well. Really, really happy with these, these plants here. And we'll be actually taking suckers off these and growing them indoors underneath the grow lights. That was a decision that we did make uh, because we just don't have the, we don't have the amount of seeds yet that I feel comfortable um, being able to distribute any. So we're gonna have to have a little bit more production off of these plants before we do anything. So the question on everybody's mind is, Luke, where are you at with seed production? One of the things about seed, about seed saving is that it does not happen overnight, especially when you're trying to revive such a rare variety. There's only so many ripe fruits on a plant and there's only so many seeds and viable seeds at that that you can get from every single tomato. So we're, we're definitely making good progress, but I can safely say that there's no way that I can say that we're going to have seeds available this year. And I hope everybody understands that. It's just something that I'm not going to, I mean, we might have, and you'll have to stay tuned for it because I, I, my, my opinion might change on this matter as to whether or not I wanna give seeds away or not in the form of like a giveaway or be very, very selective as to who receives them. Um, but I just don't wanna open up a can of worms. It's one of the biggest things that I don't wanna do. I don't want it to be, well, he got seeds and I didn't, and now I'm really upset. And, I just don't want that. And so I have, obviously, as the person who brought this back to life, I have every right um, and that the exclusive right to say what happens with the seeds. And I want this variety to get out, but I wanna do it in a safe way and a tactful way that's not going to upset a ton of people, that's not going to end up with seeds going in the wrong hands of people that are gonna mistreat it and, and misuse it and, and exploit it and things like that. And so it's just, it's a very, it's a very delicate dance that I have to, uh, that I have to do here. So I hope you all understand, we are saving seeds. Right now we're right at around an ounce of tomato seed, meaning that's right around 20,000 seeds. And I can safely say that that's not enough. 
if you are going to be able to give away seed in the form of selling it um, in small, super small amounts, I need to have at least 50 to 75,000 seeds available to make sure that there's enough seed for us to save, enough seeds to, uh, to distribute, and also enough seeds in an emergency bank that are going to be um, in, a, in, a, in a very, very, very safe and very sterile environment. So if anything ever were to happen to the genetics, we can always pull them back out again. And I'm going to allow for about 10,000 of those seeds to go to that location. And it's going to be an undisclosed location because I can't tell you how many shady people have, con have contacted us wanting seeds for this, offering as much as $10,000 for a seed. And these are people that I know for a fact are seed breeders that would like this genetics, that would like to offer this variety, and I'm not I'm not I'm not interested. I'm not interested I'm not in for it for the money. I'm in for it and I've told you this from the very beginning and I guarantee you there's people watching that are upset by it that I'm not interested in the money. I'm not in it for it for that. I'm in it for the genetics of this really cool variety and I am going to see this through to the very end even if I'm the only one selling these seeds. Again, I am the only person who has the genetics to this variety, and that's perfectly okay with me. If I don't give it to anybody, I'm still okay with that, <laughs> because at the end of the day, I, I know, being a, being a person who has a seed store myself, I know what the industry does with rare varieties like this. They will grow it, they will exploit it, because it's very easy. We saw the exact same thing happen with glass gem corn seeds. As everyone knows, there were so many people selling fake seed. There were so many people, it was just such a rush on the market because it was such an incredible looking corn and such an incredible looking variety that yes, we have glass gem corn seeds, but there's so many knockoffs floating around now that when you buy glass gem corn, if you don't get it from, an exa if you don't get it from a legitimate official seller, you don't know what you're getting. And a prime thing of that that I will bring up is that there's actually someone knocking us off already on eBay and Amazon selling giant crimson seeds. They've already noted that uh, they've already changed the description because I've contacted them. And it's one of those things that it's so frustrating for me to see because I know for a fact that they're not giant crimson seeds, but you're already seeing people trying to make a quick buck off this and it's just not okay. It's not okay, and that's why I'm in it for I'm in it for the genetics, and I want to make sure that I have enough seeds to ensure that people get them the right way, and not, I guess, the wrong way, <laughs> to put it simply. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed. I do hope that you're uh, you know still following along, still excited, and I will. I, I'm serious. I will give seeds away um, on our seed store responsibly when the time comes, um, and that's just simply the way I'm going to put it at, as to now. Um, I can't say for, I can't say when, I can't say how many, I, I can't give any of those details because I don't know yet. So when I do know, you'll all be updated, I promise. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.